that actually um, makes dopamine and sprays dopamine to many brain parts. We also found activity in, it's about the size of a medium-sized shrimp on either side of your head. It's called the caudate nucleus. And it receives a lot of uh, dopamine. It's got a lot of dopamine receptors. So both of these brain regions are part of what they call the reward system, the wanting system, the come-go system, the motivation system. When you reach for a piece of chocolate, it's that system that's going on. When you're going to, to have a drink, when you want to uh, you know, uh, get a raise, when you, when you want something, um, it's that brain system that becomes active. Not when you like something, not when you're feeling happy, but when you want something. It's, a it's, it's basic to the motivation system in the mind. And that led me to understand romantic love from really an entirely different way. I, I had felt that romantic love was a, an emotion or even a series of emotions, but I came to realize that it's a drive, a basic mating drive uh, a drive, indeed, that's more powerful than the sex drive. In fact, if you were to ask somebody, you know, if you ask somebody to go to bed with you and they say, no, thank you, you certainly don't go killing yourself uh, or killing somebody else mm -hmm. or slipping into a clinical depression or stalking them either, for that matter. But when you've been dumped, uh, people, a certain number of people all over the world kill themselves, kill somebody else. It can be stronger than the will to live certainly then stronger than the will to eat. Uh, um, people live for love, they sing for love, they dance for love, they write about love, uh, they kill for love, and they die for love. Um, it's one of the most powerful, I would even say the most powerful brain system on Earth. Uh, because it plays such an important role, it starts the mating process, which is, of course, from a Darwinian perspective, whether you're going to win or lose. Um, we also found a lot of other things in the brain. I'm only going to say one other, and then I'm going to go on to rejection because I, I want to hear from you and actually have a conversation with you. Um, we found a gender difference. Um, not in the, that intense craving. I think men and women find that the same. But in something else. We, among our male subjects, uh, we found more activity in a brain region associated with the integration of visual stimuli. So what is no? Women spend their lives trying to look good for men. <laughs> men support the pornography industry. And for millions of years, men needed to look at a woman to size her up for signs of health and youth and fertility so that he could um, uh, uh, court a woman who could bear him healthy babies and we're beginning to find out why men are so visual. In our female subjects, we found more activity in three brain regions near the back of the brain associated with memory recall. And at first I said, memory recall. And then it began to occur to me, oh yeah, for millions of years, a woman couldn't really look at a man and know whether he'd be a good husband or a good father. She had to remember. She had to remember what he promised last Valentine's Day. She had to remember what he said he'd do last Christmas. She had to remember what he said he was going to do this coming summer. And what do women do? We spend our lives on the telephone recounting to each other what he did and what he didn't do. We're creating a memory trail. <laughs> I've never met a man who knew as much as I remembered about the relationship. <laughs> I think it's a bit of a curse, but nevertheless, women remember. <laughs> and I think for a very uh, clear Darwinian reason. Um, I think I'll go on to rejection in love. Does anybody have a copy of my book? I thought I might read a poem. Could you just hand that up to me for uh, half a second? I never have the opportunity to read this poem. This would be a this would be a wonderful time, thanks very much, to read this poem. I wanted to start the book with um, the most powerful uh, love poem on earth. Um, and I couldn't find a powerful love poem that was happy. Because when you're happy, why bother writing love poems? It's when you're desperate in the middle of the night that you write love poems. That's when the dopamine's high and you're, you're being in intensely creative. 
so I didn't start the book with it. I found a, a Walt Whitman poem that was pretty good for the, you know, the opening poem for the whole book. But this is the most powerfully sad poem that I've ever found. I've read poetry in maybe 25 societies because I actually do think that poetry, um, other anthropologists look at arrowheads or potsherds or whatever they do to understand human behavior. I think that poetry is a wonderful um, artifact for, uh, for understanding human behavior. This poem is anonymous. So I don't know if it's male or female. I have my opinion of whether it's a man or a woman. It was recounted in uh, 1896 to a uh, missionary in southern Alaska by a Native American Indian, um, a Kwakiutl Native American Indian. So here's the poem with this music going, but nevertheless. <laughs> most powerful love poem on earth, I think. Fire runs through my body, fires run through my body, the pain of loving you. Pain runs through my body with the fires of my love for you. Sickness wanders my body with my love for you. Pain like a boil about to burst with my love for you. Consumed by fire with my love for you. I remember what you said to me. I am thinking of your love for me. I am torn by your love for me. Pain and more pain. Where are you going with my love? I am told you will go from here. I am told you will leave me here. My body is numb with grief. Remember what I said, my love. Goodbye, my love, goodbye. Thanks. Oh, I'll hand it later. Uh, I don't think there's really, I mean, there's many deep emotional pains. Uh, Emily Dickinson once said, uh, parting is all we need to know of hell. Nobody gets out of love alive. I never met anybody. I actually did meet two people who had never been dumped. They were both exceedingly handsome, exceedingly rich, extremely well known, and I thought extremely shallow. <laughs> and, and they'll probably get dumped too. They were both in their 40s when I met them. Um, everybody gets dumped. One of the most powerful experiences on earth. And uh, I wanted to know the full range of romantic love. So I decided I would put um, more people in the machine who had just been dumped. That was one of the most difficult things I've ever done. Talking to people who have just been dumped is just, it's a nightmare. Um, and um, I put a sign up on the uh, SUNY, uh, bullet, SUNY Stony Brook Bulletin Board, have you have you just been rejected but can't let go? And people would come in and, uh, and I would talk to them at great length about the rejection. And uh, then I did exactly the same experiment with them. Looking at the sweetheart, counting back the neutral, count back, exactly the same experiment. Told them exactly what was gonna happen uh, to them in, in the machine. I really didn't have a theory for um, what was going to happen. I know that when you're, when you're dumped, you just like the person harder. I, in fact, I coined a term for that, um, uh, frustration attraction. And it's because this reward system in the brain, when you don't get what you want, you just wanted more. So this key, it keeps on cranking up. What a bad deal. You've just been dumped, you like the person more. So I figured I would find in the brain uh, activity associated with romantic love. But then I started putting people in the machine, and the first person I put in was a, a girl I'll call Barbara. She was the sweetest little girl. She was maybe 21. She'd never been in love before. I put her in the machine uh, 10 months earlier. Um, she hopped over to that hospital. She was so ecstatic about this boy. And um, we caught her brain madly in love. And then 10 months later, I walked into the uh, uh, lab in uh, SUNY Stony Brook and sure enough there was this girl she was sitting there she I don't think she'd combed her hair in three days face streaming with tears she looked like she had lost 15 pounds and I was so taken aback I just I literally had to step away for a while and then I said to myself go ask her to if she'd go back in the machine so <laughs> I did and she did and I put her in the machine we had all the data for her and she was very happy to do it. She wasn't happy about anything, but she was willing to do it for me. And when she came out of the machine, 
I, you know, we get her out on the gurney. We're still in this giant hospital room and everything. And we give them uh, $50 uh, after they come out and a picture of their brain. So anyway, she comes out. <laughs> she leaps off this gurney. She tears out of the room, leaves the hospital, doesn't collect her money, nothing. 